about. So like I said, thank you everyone for joining us for this special presentation with Camp Quality. We have Lauren Burke, uh, the Senior Director of Programs and Maya Stern, who's the Manager of Grants and Operations here to talk to us about all the great uh, programs that Camp Quality offers families. Um, okay, you can start. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much uh, for having us this evening. We're, we're so glad to be a part of this and have an opportunity to chat with all of you um, and share a little bit about what we have been up to the past two years and what we're planning for, for 2022. So let's go ahead and get started. We'll do a little introduction in true camp form. Um, so again, my name is Lauren and I'm the Senior Director of Programs uh, at Camp Quality Canada. Um, and I've been with Camp Quality for three years, but have been working in medical camping for, for almost 10 now, which is a little bit wild to think about. Um, and I, I support all of our camps across Ontario, Manitoba, and Alberta. Um, and with me tonight, I have Hi everyone, my name is Maya Stern. Um, I'm the manager of grants and operations at Camp Quality. I've also been with Camp Quality for about three years. Um, I offer activities to, or I, I offer our young adult program and I also help support the whole nonprofit side of, of the organization. And I myself am a childhood cancer survivor. So my background is going to camp and experience with cancer. Great, thanks so much, Maya. Um, all right. So uh, <laughs> today we're going to be talking to you about Camp Quality, our little 101. Um, we'll give, be giving you the lowdown on our programs, tell you about how we've been dealing with COVID-19, how to apply to camp, and we'll give you an opportunity to ask questions. Great. Um, so a little bit about Camp Quality. Uh, we, we offer uplifting camp programs for children affected by cancer uh, and their families. Uh, our programs are designed to meet the unique physical, social, and psychological needs of our camper. Um, and we really offer a, a safe environment where kids are free to be themselves without the stigma uh, of illness. Um, what's really unique about Camp Quality is our companion matching model. Um, so at Camp Quality, uh, a companion is uh, a camp counselor who is matched one-to-one -one with a camper uh, to offer another level of support. So while everything we do at camp happens in groups for safety, of course, um, our campers have an extra person that they can look to as a role model role model or mentor, um, which often just provides a, a really great level of comfort for our campers and for uh, their parents. Um, and as I said, uh, we, we serve children affected by cancer, and that is not only uh, the patient campers, but siblings as well um, attend our programs. And we'll talk a little bit more about that shortly. So Camp Quality was founded in Australia by a woman named Vera and Whistle. Um, Vera's mission was to provide a program that supports children and with cancer and their families, an area that was not being addressed at the time. Since EQ was brought to Canada, we have expanded to camp locations all across the country and we continue to grow in numbers each year. While Vera was coming up was trying to come up with a name for her new camp, a doctor said to her, no one can do anything about the quantity of life but we can all do something about the quality. This continues to represent the spirit of our camp, providing quality of time with the best people through a strong and established program. So we do offer programs um, across the country in Ontario, Manitoba, and Alberta, but of course, we're going to focus on Ontario tonight. Uh, we facilitate four different Ontario-based overnight camp weeks. We have one in Thunder Bay that happens in July, another in Sudbury that also happens in July, um, and then one in Ottawa that happens in August, and another that covers Southern Ontario, so Toronto, Hamilton, London, um, where, where kids can come for a week in August as well. Um, Having, having our camps in each region really gives campers and families uh, an opportunity to have connection and community with those who have similar experiences. So, so we hear so often from the families that uh, participate in our programs that, you know, outside of camp, they're, they're getting together and they're, they're having playdates or they're going to dinner with families 
um, obviously not during the pandemic, but uh, during normal years. Um, so it's a really, really cool opportunity to have camps in different regions where we can serve, serve everyone. So we offer a wide range of uh, activities for our campers, siblings, and families. Um, our programs are free of charge to, to anyone who attends. Um, we've got our overnight summer camp weeks. So that's a uh, one week of summer camp uh, for children and youth ages seven to 17. Um, so this is children with cancer, their siblings. Um, and sometimes we do have bereaved siblings join in for, for the week long summer camp as well. We've got family fun days, which are all ages. So they're single day community events uh, throughout the year. Um, and campers bring their, their siblings and their parents and maybe we're going apple picking or having a picnic in the park uh, or you know having a carnival. Uh, there's lots of different fun activities that happen in each region uh, across Ontario for these family fun days. Um, so it's, it's always great to, to see the parents come out as well and caregivers and uh, they get the opportunity to connect with other adults who have those similar experiences. Um, we also have our Camp at Home program, uh, which is our, our virtual programming that uh, started over the last two years because of the pandemic. Um, so uh, since the pandemic started, we, we haven't been running any in-person programs um, just because safety is our, our top priority and, and we felt uh, we wanted to wait till the, the time was right to do so. So we started our Camp at Home program where campers in, in each region across Ontario could participate in a one week virtual summer camp. Um, and they got a camp in a box sent to them with a t-shirt, uh, craft supplies, science experiments, games, all the things that you need to make a really fun camp week. Um, and uh, then we also started virtual clubs, uh, which uh, campers could tune in, you know, once a week, once a month uh, with dance or nature and things like that. We have our New Heights programming, which is for teens, so 14 to 17. Um, and uh, we do teen programs virtually once a month where teens can log in and just have a chance to hang out with each other, um, play some games. Maybe there'll be some different activities planned for the night. Um, and our New Heights program also does a weekend uh, at camp uh, in Southern Ontario where teens can come and connect with each other. And there's a focus on leadership. Um, and then Breaking Borders. Maya, why don't you just give a little definition of that one? Because that's that's your program. <laughs> yeah, so very quickly, it is our young adult program. Um, it started off as an adventure program that was planned by our participants. And during the pandemic, we've obviously uh, pivoted to virtual where we just do community building and connection activities and have fun. Great, thank you. Um, so as you can see, we've got a wide range of programs all different ages for, for different uh, campers and uh, to get involved, which is great. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about our overnight summer camp programs. Um, so because we are in four different regions across Ontario, each of our campsites looks a bit different, is a little bit unique. Some have cabins, some have dorms, um, some have pools, some have lakes. Um, so they're a little bit different, but on our website, you can actually um, find your region and learn a little bit more about uh, that campsite specifically. Um, all of our camps offer uh, the typical camp activities you would think of. So arts and crafts, sports, uh, we've got swimming, campfires, archery, some of them have uh, rock climbing, um, lots and lots of fun activities, um, as well as some CQ special activities that we plan in the evenings um, that are part of our, our traditions at camp. Um, each of our, our overnight camps also has a medical team, um, which you may be familiar with from other camps. So we'll have um, a medical coordinator on site and a team of nurses um, to support our campers and volunteers uh, throughout the camp week. So um, before attending camp, all of our campers um, and volunteers fill out uh, a medical form online. Um, and that's reviewed by our medical team to make sure that we can support everyone um, successfully at camp. Um, and then as well as our over, at our overnight summer camps, we have our camp 
organizing committees. Um, so these are teams of year round volunteers that plan and facilitate the camp week. So there is a camp director, a volunteer coordinator, a family coordinator, um, and the family coordinator is someone that you would hear a lot from as you're getting ready for camp through the camp week and after um, checking in about, about your child. So I've got a little video here. <laughs> just a quick little little snippet of some of the magic that happens at our overnight programs. Um, we are very excited to, to begin planning to, to return to in-person programs later this summer. And we'll talk a little bit more about that soon and what that will look like. Um, but I'm gonna pass it back to Maya who's gonna chat to us uh, about our Camp at Home programs. Yeah, so as Lauren mentioned, we offer two types of virtual programs. Um, there's camp at home where campers receive a camp in a box that have all the supplies that they need with for a week of fun and in that camp in a box is a an activity booklet that guides them through the week so that they're doing the same activities that's their friends at the same time um, during the virtual camp week they can also join on zoom during the morning and the evening or the evening whatever they want to see their friends and volunteers and participate in games songs and more um, we also offer virtual uh, virtual clubs throughout the year where campers have a chance to learn a specific skill. So we offer arts and crafts, dance, nature, games, and more. Um, and this past year, we also had a parent and caregiver session where they participated in art therapy. Um, the clubs are typically about one hour in length and they happen once a month. Campers receive badges that you'll see on the left of the screen um, that they can add, add to their CQ lanyards when they participate. We heard from many families last year about how important the clubs were for keeping their campers connected. And we also watched campers grow in their confidence while they built a new skill. Um, now Lauren is gonna share a little clip from the dance recital we had in the dance club. And this clip, the recital never, like I always smile when I watch it, it makes me so happy. Um, could you hear the music in the last clip? Yes. Great, all right, here we go. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Now it's moving. I'm not hearing music though. virtual skill clubs that we offer throughout the year is that campers from every province get to uh, participate in them. So campers from Alberta and campers from Ontario are having the chance to meet during these programs um, and build friendships when uh, they, they wouldn't normally meet when they're at in-person camp. Um, our dance club, we actually partnered with a uh, accessible dance company from Toronto. So they were able to help put together some choreography uh, that works for everyone in the group, which is really great. So as I mentioned, Breaking Borders is our young adult program um, and it's offered to survivors ages 18 to 29. The program began as a participant directed adventure program where participants met over time 
chose a destination and planned a trip. And um, it helped them build community with other survivors and develop important skills that helped them throughout their lives. Past trips included uh, kayaking on the Bay of Fundy, sailing on Lake Huron, and canoeing through Algonquin Park. For the past two years, Breaking Borders has been delivered as a virtual community building program where participants meet online to connect, build skills, and have fun. Um, this year, we will be hosting drop-in sessions, so you don't have to sign up for a full uh, six-month program um, where any young adult can join us and we're just going to have fun, play games, connect with each other. Amazing. Um, so as I had mentioned before, our intent is to return to in-person programs at our overnight camps this year. Um, and I, as I'm sure many of you know, with schools, uh, the guidelines are ever changing. Um, so we will be diligently following guidance from the provincial government, local public health unit, and the camping associations that we're accredited by. Um, our staff and volunteers are gonna be completing additional training on our COVID-19 protocols uh, to make sure we have the safest possible environment for our campers. Um, we're gonna continue to monitor and consider a number of different measures, um, which could include uh, capacity rates at our camps, uh, community infection rates, new variants, different mandates. Um, and we'll, we'll continue to review and update our policies and procedures throughout the, the spring and summer uh, to stay in compliance um, and maintain a, a really safe program. And uh, we'll con communicate any of these changes uh, as early as possible. Um, but, you know, after two seasons of camp at home, we are very ready for the excitement of, you know, going back to camp and trying an activity for the first time. Uh, the laughter and the giggles under the stars and the friendships that are always created around the campfire. Um, and we're just so ready to uh, get back to together um, with, with everyone for that camp magic. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, our plans and what camp might look like this summer. Um, so what can you expect um, if your, your child is attending camp quality um, in person this summer? Um, so there's gonna be a number of different uh, measures we have in place to ensure safety. Um, all of our campers, volunteers, and staff will be fully immunized against COVID-19 in order to attend uh, in-person programs. Uh, in typical years at camp, we have asked participants to be vaccinated for a variety of things. So those who are eligible um, and medically able to be immunized um, uh, are welcome to come to camp. Um, we'll also continue to offer our, our virtual programs throughout the year um, for those who aren't quite ready to return. Um, all participants uh, will be required to participate in COVID-19 testing um, when required, um, and we'll communicate more details about what that will look like closer to camp. Um, all of our participants will be required to complete COVID-19 screenings when required, um, and campers and volunteers may be assigned to a cohort for the duration of their camp week. Um, so we might uh, have different groups traveling around camp, keeping distance from each other. Uh, masks will be required during designated times for everyone. Um, and kind of a simple way we're thinking about it right now uh, for our COVID protocols is uh, the two out of three rule. So you must always be doing two of the three following things. So one, wearing a mask two, be physically distant, or three, be outside. Um, so we're gonna ask all of our participants to be doing uh, at least two of those um, while they're at our programs. Um, and as always, uh, campers will have their one-to-one their -one companion uh, who's there to support them throughout the week um, with helpful reminders about COVID-19 protocols. Um, and we'll also have lots of helpful signs um, and posters around camp to remind everybody. Um, so a little bit more about a, what a COVID-19 program experience might uh, look and feel like. Um, as I said before, campers and volunteers may be assigned to a cohort for the duration of their camp week, um, which would just be a designated group of campers and volunteers that share the same dorm or cabin space um, and maintaining the same members for the entirety of the week. Um, small group activities for cohorts will be planned throughout the week. Um, and if we're doing large group activities, like in 
normal <laughs> pre-pandemic years, um, each cohort would maintain physical distancing from other cohorts. Um, outdoor programming will be the primary focus of our 2022 program. So as much outside time and as much sunscreen as we can put on, uh, we will be out there. Um, and meal times as well will include a, a mix of outdoor and indoor dining, uh, potentially maintaining distance for, for those camp cohorts. We're excited that registration is going to go live in February. Um, if you aren't already a CQ family and would like to be notified about registration going live, you can email info at campquality.org or you can type your email into the chat box and I'll add you to our email list. Um, we're opening our registration at a reduced capacity, so it will be on a first come first serve basis. Our intent is to open more uh, spots for overnight camp as we learn from, more from the province and we receive guidance from our medical advisory committee. We will be holding a, a, number of, a limited number of spots for new campers though. Our registration is through Camp Doc, which makes it easy for you to sign in, complete forms, and manage multiple profiles. Um, and we encourage you to, to check out our website. There's lots of information about each of our regional camps. So Camp Quality Northwestern Ontario, which is in Thunder Bay, Camp Quality Northern Ontario in Sudbury, Camp Quality Eastern Ontario in Ottawa, and Camp Quality Southern Ontario, which gets Toronto, Hamilton, London, and everywhere, everywhere south. <laughs> Um, so definitely make sure to check out our website. And again, our, our programs are always free. So all you have to do, sign up, show up, and have a lot of fun. <laughs> if you have any questions or you're confused about which camp you belong to, maybe you live somewhere in between, um, and or there's a question that you don't want to ask right now, um, you can email us at info at campquality.org or call one of the phone numbers on the slide. <laughs> Um, or if you want to speak to myself or Maya directly, um, just our first names at campquality.org and you'll get a, get a hold of us. Um, we're part of a very small staff team based out of Toronto. So uh, it's a, a team of uh, five people uh, that support our camps. Um, and uh, we've got over 400 volunteers that, that make our programs happen. Um, so feel free to reach out with any questions or if you want to talk through anything. Um, and finally, we've got some little camp at home goodies for all of you tonight that you can download, print, and have fun. Um, so Maya's very creative and has helped put these together. We've got uh, a teen journal, which has some really fun creative writing prompts um, and drawing prompts as well that you can print off. We've got a camper badge activity booklet. Um, so uh, there's nine different activities uh, in this booklet that campers can complete at home, all the supplies you should have at home. Um, you can cut out the badges when you've, when you've completed one and get a certificate at the end. Um, but last but not least, we, we also have a, a small activity book for parents and caregivers because uh, you are an important part of making camp happen, especially through our, our virtual programs. We know uh, parents and caregivers are doing the cleanup, the Zoom setup, uh, managing, managing multiple kids at home. So we want you to have a, an opportunity to have some camp at home fun as well. So you can um, check that out on our website. I think we're going to send it out after um, and uh, be sure to download your own copy. And finally, we're going to do a little CQ Q&A because um, we're Camp Quality Canada. Um, and uh, with that, I'm going to stop sharing my screen, but we are happy to answer any questions that people have this evening. Thank you so much, uh, Laura and Maya, for an excellent presentation. We learned a lot about Camp Quality. And of course, if anybody has any questions now, please feel free to ask them, turn your camera on or, or type it in the chat. Um, in the meantime, I just had some questions that we had received in advance about siblings. Well, we know siblings are welcome, which is excellent. <laughs> Wonderful to have the siblings included as well. And also somebody had asked specifically about what programs in Toronto do you offer? That's a great question. Yeah, so for siblings, um, they actually attend camp the same week uh, as patient campers, which is awesome that they have that experience together. Um, for Toronto area, Camp Quality Southern Ontario is the name of our program that campers 
can attend in this region. Um, they offer a number of different programs. They do virtual teen nights right now once a month. So um, campers 14 to 17 can log on for that. Um, uh, we are planning to run some single day fun days uh, for Southern Ontario as well for the Toronto area. Um, so the whole family can come out um, for a day of fun, uh, of course, with COVID protocols in place. Um, and then as well, uh, our Southern Ontario camp uh, operates out of a camp uh, in Rockwood. So kind of in between Milton and Guelph. Uh, so campers can, can spend a week uh, overnight at that camp, uh, which is nice because it's still close to McMaster and close to sick kids. So there's that, that added level of, of safety knowing that uh, both the hospitals are quite close. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Just looking at the chat here now. <laughs> uh, those uh, digital resources that Lauren talked about, I'll be sending them out to everybody who registered for this presentation, whether they're here or not. Everybody who registered will get the link to those. And of course, if you have any questions, you can contact uh, Lauren or Maya at campquality.org and check out their website, campquality.org. Um, just a final call for questions and before we kind of wrap it up. All right. Well, I think uh, that's it. That, <laughs> that was a very great, oh, there is one question from Don. Oh. Are there opportunities to apply to be a volunteer at Camp Quality Southern Location in Toronto? Good question about volunteers. Absolutely. So there definitely are opportunities to volunteer. Um, volunteers have to be at least 18 years old. So they have to fill out an application, um, do a background check, uh, go through an interview, all the, all the screening steps to make sure we've got a really safe program. Um, we do ask that um, if parents or caregivers are interested in volunteering, they do so when their child is not at camp. Um, so we wanna have uh, an opportunity for campers and siblings um, to, to have a little space from, from uh, their parents and caregivers and have an opportunity to, to be at camp and, and make some friendships. But um, definitely check out our website, um, campquality.org slash volunteer um, to learn more about that. Great, thank you. Great question, Danya. Um, before we go, just to give a quick reminder to everyone here that OPAC also offers um, support to families. Uh, we do virtual support sessions through Zoom every uh, Tuesday at 7.30 with our parent liaison, Susan, Michelle, and Karen, and also one-on-one -on -one support. And we do these virtual uh, monthly sessions, uh, educational sessions with guest speakers every month. And uh, yeah, we have a lot of support resources on our website as well at opacopacc.org. So thank you everybody so much for joining us tonight. And thank you, uh, Maya and Lauren for telling us uh, about Camp Quality and all the wonderful programs. We really hope that yes. you'll be able to start in person <laughs> in the summer. Yes. So uh, yeah, definitely sign up for their updates to, uh, to know more about it and keep up to date on those. And yeah, thank you again so much, everybody. Take thank care. You. Well, thanks, thanks for having, for having us. us. Hopefully to, to get a chance to speak with all of you. And yes, hopefully, fingers crossed, summer 2022, we are back in person. Um, have a great night, everyone. Thank you again. Thank you. Good night. Bye.